Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully you're having a great week. It is almost the holiday season, whether you celebrate Christmas or celebrate something else, uh, whatever your celebrations are. They are, may already be here. They may be on their way. Either way, it's close, and then we get New Year right after that. So it is uh, crazy. Again, I always say it, this year has gone by so darn fast. It's sh- it's shocking. It just blows my mind. Maybe it's just part of getting old, but uh just what it is. So before we get into today's episode, just want to let you know this episode brought to you by Team Titleist. And listen, we're excited to share with you guys exclusive opportunities from Titleist. But to be part of the part of them, you have to join Team Titleist. Team Titleist gives you access to opportunities like prototype testing, special events, limited edition gear from Titleist, and so much more. Sign up and join us on Team Titleist at Titleist.com forward slash Team Titleist. One word, Team Titleist. So check it out. I'm actually a member. Uh, so I haven't, uh, I've been doing some, you know, golf ball prototype testing in a sense, but uh, haven't been uh, selected through there yet. So again, it is the week of, uh, of, uh, of, of Christmas. If you're, like I said, if you're, uh, if that's what uh, you celebrate and it is crazy to think that it is just a couple days away. So I'm totally not ready. I'm in my basement where my studio slash workshop is and I look out and the sea of Amazon boxes that still have not been wrapped yet or <laughs> that stuff and uh my wife has not been feeling well so we, we just have we've been slacking big time on uh, getting stuff wrapped and getting things ready to go so we got some work to do uh, tonight and tomorrow night uh, to make sure that we're <laughs> we're prepared so uh, I know there's probably a lot of people I know that uh, tons of people are not feeling great around here I know Tursky and I recorded last night recorded TG2 and he's not feeling great, uh, so I mean it's going around. I am, uh, you know, knocking on wood that I uh, that I'm, I'm I'm good right now. Hopefully, I stay that way for the next few days. Get through the the weekend, get through the holiday, and then you know make sure I'm I'm okay. But uh, hopefully, you're not one of the people not feeling great. And if you aren't, hopefully, you get better soon. So yeah, it's uh, the holiday season. It's uh, it's interesting. I've got uh, I've got the typical. You know, if you got kids, you probably. Uh, if you do, you probably split family time, you know, between, you know, your family, your spouse's family, whatever. So I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be doing my uh, my wife's side of the family on New Year's or, or Christmas Eve. Uh, we spend the whole day over there and just, you know, it's a whole Christmas day. It's great. Uh, and then we do uh, the Christmas day on my mom's side or my dad or my family's side. But uh, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be fun. It, uh, it'll be busy. I'll be tired by the end of it, but that'll be okay. So... <laughs> But uh, I've been out, uh, I haven't been, you know, it's it's freezing here in Detroit. It's supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to, I think, get some snow today, possibly some snow tomorrow. And then uh, it's supposed to be just bitter cold over the weekend. So hopefully everything doesn't just freeze up and make travel impossible. Um, and if you are traveling for the holidays, please be safe, be careful, don't rush. Those presents will be there, those, you know. And that food will be there, all that stuff. Just don't don't go crazy. And please get to wherever you're going there and back safely. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so it's uh, been a week, and the the indoor range stuff has started up. And if you don't, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that uh, last weekend I was, uh, or the, over the weekend I was at the range, and it was 25 degrees. <laughs> so uh, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do uh, at Club Junkie Pod. Um, but yeah, I was at the range on uh, over the weekend hitting balls, and it was a little chilly. And usually, so I go to this range uh, in Royal Oak, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit. Uh, if you're familiar with it, it's at like 13 and basically Woodward. It's it's technically Coolidge, but it's right near Woodward, and Woodward's a bigger street. It's easier to <clears throat> to say and remember. But I was out there, and they have like uh, they just like re- renovated the place, added some more covered heated tees, all that. So I went out there to hit, and. They have like the heaters usually there are, are really good. Like they they do heat up the bay, and as long as the wind isn't like blowing in on you, you you're you're usually pretty good. You can hit balls in um, you know, less layers than you would think. But it was 25 degrees. Uh driving out there, it was snowing. Uh get out there, it still kind of was snowing. And to be as you would expect, to be honest, there weren't too many people at the range. So I I pulled in, there was a a couple uh kind of hitting balls. The guy was like helping his helping his uh, lady friend, and then uh, there was a girl who was insanely good, and uh, myself, and that was it. And then I think uh, while I was hitting, uh, like two buddies, you know, two guys came in and hit some balls, but there was not many people there at all. And honestly, I, I understand why. It was, uh, like I said, <laughs> snowing out on the range. Not terribly hard, but a little bit of it stuck. Um, but the heaters were not quite up to the challenge uh, that day. The wind was kind of blowing across, 
And since it was kind of blown across, it was kind of hitting into the bays and it was you know not as warm as it usually is. And I layered up not well because I figured, eh, you know, it's, it'll be fine. So I had like a long sleeve t-shirt and a vest and that was it. And, uh, other than my, like my winter jacket. So I was like, well, I guess I'm just, you know, hitting balls here. I was okay. I'm a, I'm a chubby guy, so I'm okay. But, uh, like the girl who was, uh, who was hitting, she was layered up like crazy with like the, the rain pants on probably over another pair of pants. <laughs> she had the jacket, she had a vest, she had, I mean, you name it. She had a full beanie hat. Um, but she was insanely good. She was, I was, I watched her hit a few balls and God, she was insane she was really good so uh but anyway it was uh it was a decent time of the range and had some interesting clubs out there that i've uh, i've hit actually a couple times now and i was one of those that uh, a brand that might maybe not everybody's familiar with um i've been uh, a fan kind of the brand for for a little while i guess it depends on if you're into um if you're into kind of the as they call it the jdm or, or japanese market um you know, if you're into a lot of that, uh, those companies and all that, uh, the name may be familiar to you, but it's called Vega. And uh, Vega Golf is was was founded in Japan uh, years ago. On their site, they don't tell you exactly what year or anything, but they've been around a, a long time. Uh, I've been known, I've known of them for, geez, at least ten years um, out there. But they uh, they've been making golf clubs, high end forged golf clubs. Uh, I guess they have a history in uh, in sword making out of uh, Kobe, Japan. And then uh, now they are actually owned by a UK company uh, for more distribution and stuff like that, but still making the same high quality, super high quality, all forged irons, uh, wedges, putters. They even make woods. Um, I've never hit any of the woods, uh, actually, which is funny, but um, they do make uh, woods as well. Uh, and then, like I said, putters, wedges, everything like that you'd expect. So they reached out to me uh, nicely and asked if uh, I wanted to review some stuff for the show. And I said, heck yeah, I would love to. And uh, they sent me, uh, you know, two uh, two irons uh, and a wedge. So I'm super excited uh, about, you know, was super excited about going out to hit these things. They look phenomenal. Um and like I said, you go on their website, Vegas, and you can kind of take a look. Um, you know, they the they make a couple different things from, you know, true, true blades up to, you know, super kind of game improvement irons as well. So they've got a little bit of everything. Uh, and like I said, they, they basically have a whole bag worth of uh, sticks that you can put in, which is pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, long lineage of, uh, you know, they, they kind of reference on their about page from, uh, you know, sword making was big in their area. And then like 120 years ago, uh, you know, Japan's like first golf course went in near, uh, I think it, like I said, I think it's Kobe. I'm not going to possibly pronounce it wrong. And I apologize for that. Um, I pronounce everything wrong. It seems, but, uh, uh, over there and then, uh, transition from some sword making into, you know, uh, golf clubs because golf clubs a little bit like sword making is a precision forging metalworking type of craft that, that, you know, they had people there who were already extremely skilled at. So, uh, taking that and moving it on and now using probably a little more advanced techniques than, uh, than they made, it might've used back uh, 120 years ago for swords, <clears throat> but making a ton of, uh, really, really nice forge products, uh, and stuff that is very well known to be very soft and great feeling. Uh, so yeah, I was super excited. So I got to uh, choose two. So I kind of went, um, and I apologize for that little noise. That is the dehumidifier running on my furnace, which again, it is like probably 10 degrees outside. So it's, it's the furnace has been, uh, running a uh, nonstop. It seems like, but, uh, anyway, they, uh, actually, it's, actually it's 30 outside. So not too bad. It might be a little warmer today. Um, but, uh, it's still 30 degrees outside. So, but anyway, uh, the Vega irons, uh, extremely, extremely nice. So I was lucky enough to kind of pick out in a sense, uh, the two sets I wanted to hit and, uh, went with the, uh, VDC from the classic line. They have kind of two lines, the classic and the star line. The classic line is kind of the really traditional, uh, for the most part, one piece forged, uh, irons, they make a blade cavity backs, uh, and then the VDC, which is the dual cavity back. Let me see if I grab the right one. Ah, no, grab the wrong one right out of the gate. If you're watching this on YouTube, I, uh, I try to put the, uh, uh, the clubs up on, uh, up on the screen here. But the VDC is a, uh, a uh, basically a one-piece forged player's iron, and uh, the VDC is the Vega dual cavity. So what they do is on the top side, they've got a milled out cavity, and then down in the, the lower section of the muscle, uh, they've kind of milled out some of that material as well. 
And it basically gives them, uh, taking that material out, gives them the ability to really kind of fine tune the, uh, the CG and move that around, make it a little more forgiving and just add more performance. As you can see, like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not, it's not going to do it justice, but the, the milling on the back is just kind of crazy. Uh, it's got this, uh, you know, like the edges are super sharp. Uh, you can tell they put a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the milling in there, you can see all the milling lines around the actual cavities. And then inside the cavity is kind of like this, I think it's called engine turned, you know, like you'd see on like an old boat, you know, the old, or like a fire truck, that old kind of gold lettering that has kind of like that, uh, that circular uh, pattern to it. This is kind of the same thing. And again, like I said, you might be able to see it on YouTube, but it's really, uh, it's tough to get the, the really good look of it. Um, but I do have to say the the backs of these uh, are just unbelievable. And then the face is all milled as well. Uh, and again, you're not going to be able to see that on YouTube here on my camera, but they are fully milled as well on the face. So just a ton, ton of work that goes into these things. They're all forged from one piece uh, steel. They're not like this one here, not multi piece where the hosel is forged separately from the body and then welded together. Um, like some, you know, some less expensive forgings and stuff like that are done. These are done all one piece uh, and then milled to the exact specs that they want, but it's pretty cool. I mean, they even go so far as to when you get the set and they have the little plastic wrappers, each wrapper has uh, a little bit of, and again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on YouTube, but um, it has a little marking of when the head was made, the weight on the head, which, you know, I don't remember which iron this was off of, but like, you know, 279.0 grams. And it goes down to the 10th of a gram uh, on there as well. So, I mean, it tells you exactly what uh, the set was built from. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just that, that type of, uh, you know, quality control and that type of little detail is what makes these things kind of really special, but, um, you know, stamping on the back, super minimal. I mean, just the Vega logo, uh, which, uh, the G has a little star in it. So the, the logo is done in black and then a little star done in gold and then VDC in the top cavity as well. But always thought these irons looked amazing. Uh, they've been around for a little bit, uh, but always thought these things looked amazing online. Uh, first time seeing them in person and they Definitely not disappoint. I mean, uh, like I said, the, the machine work on there, uh, the look of it is just super, super cool, super high quality. It's it, it's really nice. And uh, and the overall shape of the iron uh, is really good. Now, the, this is the, uh, uh, like I said, the classic line here. So the classic line is a little more traditional. They do a little more, uh, um, uh, like I said, the one piece, they don't do kind of like like the other one I'm, I'm hitting. Like, okay, here. Um the other one I think was the Mizar Tour, uh, which I'll talk about more, which is a little bit, bit more of a, a more advanced club in terms of build. It's multi-material, uh, but the VDC is kind of that one-piece forging with a great bunch of machining work. Um, I love the sole as well. It's got a little pre-worn uh, leading edge on it uh, just to help with kind of the turf interaction. Uh, but overall, the sole width is, is pretty narrow. Um, like I said, this is the, the nine iron here. Um, and yeah, the, the sole was pretty narrow, no real trailing edge relief. Uh, it's pretty uh, square sole, but decent amount of bounce is what it looks to have. Uh, and, uh, overall just a really traditional share shape. This one here has got a little more squared off toe than, uh, than the Mizar. Uh, and the top line there is while thin, it's not crazy like razor blade thin. I know some people are kind of into that. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can get, uh, I don't know if it'll actually focus on the uh, the top end, the top, or the, uh, what do you call it? The, whoops, bouncing my camera around. I don't know if it'll actually focus on it, but uh, if, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can kind of see the top edge, uh, or the top line is not razor, razor thin, but it definitely is a thinner uh, top line, uh, and it is a little more squared off. So overall, the shape of it is really good. Um, there's some Japanese brand clubs that they get into really, really square boxy toes. And, and I, I don't necessarily love those. Uh, this one here definitely has still a little, a little, little roundness, a little softness to it that I really like. And in true, you know, most JDM clubs, very, very little offset. Uh, the VDCs have a minimal, minimal amount of offset. Uh, I don't know what the actual number is. Uh, they don't have necessarily like the, the, the full blown specs online for that. Um, but the amount of, uh, offset is, is very, very minimal. I mean, the transition from hosel to leading edge is pretty much straight. <laughs> uh, there is just a hair of hair of offset to it. And the whole leading edge, uh, you know, on the face of the club is pretty, pretty darn straight. So if you don't like that roundness or anything like that, this definitely has that look. 
well, like I said, overall shape I think is really impressive. Uh, I like how they look a lot, and they're a little longer heel to toe, so they're not the they're not like super tiny, uh, you know, blades that you you know that you know the the sweet spots the size of uh, you know your fingernail. They are a little bigger than that, and they do offer uh, a little uh, a little more forgiveness out of them. Um, feel of them is it is extremely soft. <laughs> they are. As you would expect, uh, they they are crazy soft. Uh, when you hit them, uh, you know when you hit these things center or pretty darn close to center, um, it's almost like you don't feel the ball leaving the face. And this is even with range balls, which I've found that most of the ranges I go to, the range ball compared to you know real balls, the range balls always have some click, always have a little firmness to them. And then when you get up to the to the, the actual course, a real you know Pro V one or you know, TP5 or Z-Star or something like that has much, much softer feel off the face. These, even with, uh, you know, crappy one, two-piece range balls, whatever they are, extremely soft, uh, very responsive, and they just offer, it's one of those things that is just super solid. Uh, and I think, you know, the combination of this head and then also uh, shaft-wise, same with both, uh, the, basically the, the very famous Shimada Tour uh, that's in there. Uh, which is a very famous uh, Japanese shaft as well. But yes, the Shimada Tour, and what that is, is Shimada Tour is kind of mid-launch uh, with low spin, kind of a, just a firm profile throughout. It's kind of got, uh, when you go on you know, their uh, Shimada site, it kind of tells you it's kind of a, a firm tip, firm mid, firm butt section. Uh, and I do to say, it's, it, it's a solid-feeling shaft, and it definitely has uh, some firmness to it. I know, again, some people, when they get into some of the, uh, uh, the, the Japanese shafts and stuff like that, some people find they play maybe a little bit softer, uh, this had uh, a good feel to it. Uh, it really did, and it was it was tight, it was firm, uh, but I think it paired up well with the head. And again, feel on it extremely soft. Even when you missed it, um, like you 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 could tell that you missed it. Uh, you'd get just a little more click when you did, but it wasn't there wasn't a ton of harsh vibration. It wasn't super uh, rough on the hands, even in 26 degree weather when I was hitting it in. Uh, the responsiveness was really good as you, you know, missed a kind of toe, toe, toe and heel. The heel stayed a little softer like most, you know, one piece kind of uh, players' cavities and even blades. Uh, if you missed it slightly inside, the feel stayed a little softer, uh, but you could tell you kind of missed it inside a little bit. And then on the toe, you would get that little more of an audible click and just a little more, more vibration to the hands. Um, but the club overall, I mean, performance-wise, was really good. Uh, I thought uh, kind of a flatter launch. Uh, then, and, and I've got some of the numbers, I brought the full swing out, uh, and the full swing was working up until you hit driver, and then in the snow, uh, shots that are 200 plus yards uh, out in the snow, it wasn't uh, quite as big of a fan of, so, um, but overall I thought the, uh, the, the VDC is a very playable iron, uh, ability to kind of flight shots and hit different types of shots, extremely easy to do with this thing, uh, like I said, very little offset, um, and, you know, the ability to kind of to work it both ways and up and down. You're going to be able to do that. I'm not that, not that type of player, but it did offer a little flatter ball flight, a little lower launch than the other iron that I'm going to talk about, the Mizar Tour. So if you're a player who, you know, either hits it really high um, or is somebody who does really like to, to work the ball a lot, um, the VDC uh, is going to do that, but it's also going to offer you some forgiveness as well. I mean, I felt like uh, shots that I missed off the toe and the heel, while yes, they didn't quite carry as far as, um, the Mizar Tour, the Mizar Tour does have a little hotter face, a little thinner face, uh, so overall distance was just longer, um, but these offer just an uh, incredible feel, an incredible sound uh, if you're a, a really good ball striker and, uh, you know, and want something that is truly built for precision in a sense. Um, the, and I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted by my furnace going crazy. Um, but these here, like I said, really good. Uh, I, I love the fact that uh, like I said, that when you hit them well, that you, you get rewarded with uh, with such good feel. And then, uh, yeah, out of these, I found that, uh, you know, the misses were, were, were pretty darn good for a one-piece kind of player's cavity iron like this. Uh, they, they, they played really well. They, they did offer a good amount of forgiveness. I didn't hit really any balls that were really too crazy offline, even when I did miss it. Now, I can hit it left because I can get over the top and smother it and, and, and hit it left and and I, I hit one or two of those, but really not many. Um, overall, for the day, I was hitting irons fairly solid and pretty straight um, for the, the the time that I've been hitting them. Driver, on the other hand, those have not been going quite as well uh, on the ranges here yet. Um, I'm going to blame it on layers, but uh, but for irons, I've been hitting them pretty pretty solid, and these were uh, were really good. 
Um, I found that uh, this year, I mean, my, my carry distance on a six iron, uh, like I said, using my, my full swing uh, launch monitor for a six iron, uh, I was carrying this one like 165 with just under, or just around 4,400 RPMs of spin, just a hair under uh, 4,386. Um, and again, this is with range balls. I think if you went to more premium balls, you'd probably see that number jump just a little bit. Um, ball speed was was a 117.3, which it's funny because the ball speed actually almost matched the, uh, the the Mizar Tour. But ball speed at 117.3, uh, and then a clubhead speed of 84.4. And I know a lot of people ask all the time, like, why do you play only stiff and irons? You just get stiff irons. Uh, I only swing at like 85 miles an hour, 86 miles an hour uh, for, for an iron. I just don't swing irons that fast. Um, but Smash Factor 140, which is really good for, you know, a solid one-piece player's cavity. Uh, and then an Apex, so pretty flat, uh, 59 feet, uh, which, like I said, this one here, you could definitely tell ball came out flat or stayed that way uh, in a launch angle of, like, around 13 and a half for the VDC. So, um, overall, like I said, this thing here flew a little flatter for me. I would probably put just a slightly higher launching shaft. Um in this in, in this head for for my game but i think for a lot of players if you're looking for something to kind of lower ball flight hit it a little fat flatter uh this thing offers a, a whole ton of that um and again the the, the miss hits were really good like i said i, I miss it typically out on the toe uh, as i come kind of down and across it and uh it, it kind of you know even those shots there went really well i mean they, they came up short of target but they, they still went pretty straight. They still stayed online really well. And uh, it was one of those, uh, I was pretty impressed with the miss hits there. Um, the overall uh, performance, like even even from, say, you know, four iron through nine iron, because I had full sets, uh, the four iron was, was, was a, you know, it, it definitely came out flat. That was one that off the turf would be a little bit of work for me just because it, it, it did fly flatter. But when you get into like the short irons, like the nine iron pitching wedge, all that, uh, that kind of shorter, you know, that, that flatter ball fly does kind of, it's kind of nice to offer by a little bit of control and able to kind of flight those balls a little bit and, and hit different shots with, uh, you know, with your short irons, just giving you a little bit more versatility. Um, but the VDC, I thought uh, overall really, really solid. And uh, I'll kind of compare, I guess, at the end in terms of numbers between the two, but, uh, but really impressed. Like I said, this one here, um, you know, would it make it into my bag necessarily? With the Shimada Tour, probably not, uh, just because I, I felt like I didn't quite hit it as high as I'd like to, but the overall feel of it was absolutely phenomenal. I love the feel. I love the sound. Uh, all that were, were, were really, really good. So uh, the VDC, if you're looking for kind of a slightly lower launching player's cavity, um, definitely worth, uh, worth, worth taking a look at because it is uh, just beautifully done uh, and has just... I mean, between the beautiful shape work and the amazing feel, uh, it still does perform pretty, pretty well. And if you're somebody looking for something a little lower launching, a little more penetrating ball flight, this thing does uh, does offer it. So the uh, the other one I was hitting was uh, what they call the, the Mizar Tour, which uh, is, oops, I'm grabbing wrong irons here. They're all over the floor. Got, there we go. Um, so the Mizar Tour uh, is the other option for Vega, which again is their uh, is, is what they call their Star Line, and basically the Star Line uh, packs a little more technology into into the club. It uh, this one here is a, a multi material uh, iron, so it's an actual forged body. So it's forged out of uh, I think they call it twenty five or S twenty five. Let me make sure I get that right. Um, so the body is forged from uh, S25C steel, so it's one piece forged. So the hosel, all that, uh, is is done as uh, as one, and then it has a softer uh, face that's basically made from uh, miraging steel. Um, I think I'm again, I, I always pronounce that wrong, but uh, it's basically got a, a face insert that's uh, miraging steel uh, that's made from a soft carbon, and it's like three and a half millimeters thick, so a little bit thinner, um, and multi-piece but you would never tell it when you look down at this thing uh it is extremely compact it's definitely a little more rounded than uh in terms of the toe shape it's a little more rounded than the vdc so depending on what you like uh in 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 terms of looks uh they both offer uh, a slightly different look and for me i'm a little more of a rounded guy uh the mizar tour kind of fit my uh bill and if you're looking for i know a lot of multi multi-piece uh multi-material multi-piece heads have kind of gotten a little more on the, you know, their the player distance, but they're kind of going more towards the forgiving side and all that. This is one that uh, kind of goes the other direction. Uh, I feel like this is a player's distance iron built for the player who wants 
precision uh, and is willing to give up maybe a touch of uh, forgiveness for that, but it is extremely compact for a multi-material head. I would say this kind of <clears throat> sits in there, all, I mean, really realistically, probably around T100 size. Uh, it's got a very thin top line, like I said, a little more rounded. And in terms of offset, again, I, there's no way I think I can pull this off on uh, on YouTube here. But the amount of offset this thing has is like zero. Um, I wouldn't quite say it's like onset, like uh, Justin Thomas's Titleist irons, but it has. I know there's always people who say I want as as little offset as possible. Um, if you want as little, this is about without going to a true true blade, whatever. This is about the least amount of offset I think I've ever seen in a cavity back, especially a multi-piece cavity back uh, iron ever. Uh, there's just almost none. And for most of us, especially guys like myself who hit it left, it is a kind of a great looking thing. Like we, it's, it's interesting. It's almost, it's almost weird because you're, you're still not used to seeing clubs with, with so little offset um, that when you first set it down, it's almost kind of like there's, it's almost like your eyes playing tricks on you and you kind of go, wait, what's, what's going on with this iron? Um, but once you get out and start hitting it, it's really nice behind the ball. It looks really good. It sets up well. Uh, and like I said, a little shorter from heel to toe uh, than the VDC. Um, and top line wise, it's just a little softer, a little more rounded. It's not quite as squared off. Uh, and it almost looks uh, a little thinner uh, top line wise than the VDC when you set the two down together. Uh, again, very minimal offset. I would say this has less than the VDC, um, even in like the four iron. Uh, it has almost none, which I know a lot of times, again, you get into the, some of these player irons and player distance, and you get into the, the long irons, you see a bunch of offset things, you know, either get longer heel to toe, whatever. Big has done a really good job with keeping even the long irons somewhat compact, almost no offset uh, throughout the whole set. And uh, just a really, really good look. And then the back is, uh, you know, for being a multi-piece thing, it's it's pretty simple. I'm not going to say it's, uh, you know, I know some of the, the multi-piece heads, they've gone to basically almost looking like a blade. This kind of keeps some of its roots and keeps a little cavity up near uh, up, up near the top and the toe. Um, but it, it's, again, it's pretty cool that they forge the whole body where a lot of these kind of for, claimed forged irons, uh, they forge the face and then the body and everything else is cast and everything. This is... Uh, a forged body, soft steel face that uh, they don't say that it's cast, but they don't say that it's forged. So I'm going to go with that it's cast. Um, but then they also have uh, some pockets internally to adjust the weighting and adjust the flight. Um, so it's uh, an iron that really focuses on the looks and the feel. And to be honest, it feels really good. Um, it is just, I wouldn't even say firmer. It, it's just, it's maybe got a touch more sound than the VDC. And by touch, I mean, very, very little. It is extremely soft. Again, one of those irons that when you hit it in the center, you almost don't feel that you hit the ball. Like it just kind of thuds and the ball just goes. Um, it really is shocking how good it feels. And then it also has a bunch of power to it. It it really goes. I was really kind of shocked at how how much ball speed this thing carried. I figured, yes, it's multi-piece, but you know, it's it's pretty small. It's a small package. It's not gonna really go. It's gonna be, you know, no, it was it thing is, is is hot. Ball comes off the face really fast, um, and it's pretty darn forgiving for for its size. I mean, everything that it does in this small package is really really impressive. Uh, you know, they've got uh, you know, like I said, they they alter kind of the CG. I will just say the long irons in this one a little easier to hit for me uh, than than the VDC just because they they were easier to launch, um, and they did launch a little bit higher. So this here, um, you know, in, in terms of Feel, performance, all that. The, the miss hits definitely carried a little bit farther. I think some of my worst shots uh, with this kind of carried as much as um, a, a little bit smaller miss hit uh, on the VDC. It's just that that thin face allows you to carry a, a, a little bit more ball speed off those, uh, you know, when you do miss it off the, the toe and the heel and, and even low on the face, uh, the, the ball really went. Low on the face was is, is typically right now an, an absolute killer up here in Michigan because it's, uh, because it just, uh, it just rattles through your hands. This didn't quite have that. It definitely still had a soft feel. Uh, again, a little bit like the VDC. When you missed it, you did notice you got a little bit more of a click. You got a little bit more of a, a, a vibration to the hands, uh, but nothing that was like, you know, rattling your teeth or anything like that, even in 26 degree weather uh, and, and snow, you had no problem with that. Um, and ball struck dead center were absolutely, absolutely flushed. And, and when you did put a great swing and, a, and, and you know, a good swing on it, and you hit it in the center and it went, 
um, you were rewarded with uh, a little extra distance. There was some shots uh, that I hit because, you know, like I said, it's, it's cold. You're hitting range balls, whatever. And I think the first ball I hit, uh, you know, I hit it. I looked back in the full swing because it has the screen on it. And it was like 171 yards of the six iron. And I was like, well, that's like what I hit my six iron. Like it's a 170 to, you know, maybe 175 club at the best. And it's 26 degrees out. It's kind of snow. It's snowing, and I'm hitting range balls, and it literally went one seven. And just looking back, hitting balls. I mean, balls that were struck well were almost going the distance that, or going the distance that I would kind of expect a six iron to go in the summer. You know, in the the the, the, the summer, spring, whatever, uh, anytime when it's significantly warmer. And uh, so it'd be interesting. I think these. Uh, Definitely have uh, they definitely have a, a little little firepower to them, and they're definitely a pretty powerful iron uh, out there. But they don't sacrifice the feel or the look, and, that, and that's kind of the cool thing about it. I think I really like um, you know the, the the look, the feel. I mean, everything about them is just done really really well. Um, so these ones here again, really narrow sole again for a player's iron uh, or player's distance iron, as I'm going to categorize it. Uh, you don't really kind of get that kind of thinness uh in a lot of these irons um but it definitely has it uh so this one here if you get into uh, a few of the numbers i'll go carry wise average 171 so uh, for me about six yards longer than the vdc um spin number was pretty close too it was, it was basically i mean again these are range balls so it's going to be a little low uh but 43 40 so it was about 50 rpm uh, less than the VDC. Again, I think those numbers would definitely climb if you're hitting a really good, you know, a, a premium ball, a tour type ball. Uh, you're going to see more spin than that. Um, and ball speed was pretty much identical at 117.2. Uh, they were pretty much identical, which is, but I think you take in uh, a few more uh, miss hits on this that still carried really well, but still, I mean, ball speed 117.2 uh, and a club head speed of 80, almost 86. So I was 85 and a 85.7 uh, here. With a smash factor of one three seven, so I missed the missed the dead center a little bit more on this one, uh, but the ball flight didn't really change, and I was still hitting it really good. Um, I was actually kind of shocked when I pulled these up because I hit a bunch, you know, I hit hit a bunch of balls all out of the range, and then I kind of didn't look at them. I, mean, I was looking at the, the carry yardage and stuff, uh, but I wasn't you know looking at a ton. And then I kind of packed everything up, came home, and then I really didn't look at it till like yesterday. Um, and then I was like, really, because like, I. In my mind, I, I hit this, uh, the Mizar Tour, much better. And then looking at the numbers, I was kind of shocked that the VDC was so close because to me, in terms of feel, I felt like this was was definitely the one that I was hitting better. And just interesting to see how good the numbers are or how close they are between both. Uh, and like I said, performance-wise, I was seeing uh, a little better performance out of the VDC. But again, that carry number, I think, when I did miss it here on the Mizar Tour, that, that hotter face, kind of let me get away with some shots and kind of kept up, you know, the balls kept up uh, better uh, where I probably maybe made better contact with uh, the VDC. Uh, the apex was definitely higher at 63 feet compared to 59. Uh, and it was noticeable. Uh, the, and again, the launch angle about a degree different uh, launching this at 14 and a half where the VDC was 13 and a half or 13, six. So um, definitely easier to launch, definitely kind of a higher peak height, uh, and for me, the, the descent angle on the Mizar Tour was was probably steeper. Uh, I know that, unfortunately, I do have to say the one thing with full swing that I that I would love with I would it, it tracks all those numbers. Uh, it, it tracks so much stuff, but it only lets you compare uh, between clubs a, a handful of, uh, of of items. So um, hopefully, they will uh, update that where where we can kind of see everything. Uh, you know, and you can kind of see you know, all the different things in terms of, you know, attack angles and all that stuff. But uh, for right now, they don't uh, have that where I can kind of look at um, every single aspect uh, compared next to each other. But uh, the Mizar Tour, uh, like I said, super impressed. I, these these could be in the bag right now. Um, I, I was hitting them so well, uh, like I said, from short iron even to long iron. Um, I don't know if the four iron would necessarily replace. I kind of like really like the eye crossover. The eye crossover still launches higher. Um, you know, it's got a little lighter graphite shaft and gets up in the air a little easier. So I, I don't know the four iron, but even the four iron, the four iron's a little intimidating because it has, again, almost zero offset to it. Um, and when you set it down, it, it does, you know, you're, it's, it's a long shaft and, and there's not a lot of offset and there's, a, you know, it's a smaller club, but uh, overall, 
really impressed with how these played and and the shots I was able to get away with. I, I just didn't think I was going to be able to get away with just because when I, when I pulled these out and I saw how small they were, no offs and all this stuff, I, I just kind of figured, you know what, this would be great to hit, but I, I'm not going to have the game to kind of to, to play these. So far, um, they they could be in the bag at the moment. They are they are really really good. And the Shimada Tour is is a really good chapter. It, it really is tight. Uh, it's got really tight dispersion. Uh, it, it definitely has a firmer feel than I thought. Like I said, I've hit some of the, the the JDM products, and they do to me kind of sometimes feel maybe just a little bit softer. This had a really tight feel. Um, I would I'm trying to think what I would compare it to, because um, it is kind of got like a an overall kind of stiff feel to it. It's it's not. It doesn't have that crazy lively kick like a dynamic gold. Um, you know, it's, it's probably something it's, it's I don't know, even like a modus 120 feels a little different. Um, it's kind of got almost like a, um, almost like a C taper feel, but it's not that harsh. It's, it's definitely much smoother and, and, and the launch is higher, but it's almost got that firmness to it uh, from a profile profile perspective. But, uh, overall the Mizar tours, I really like, um, I think, like I said, right now, these things are going to battle out, uh, uh, with my, uh, right now I've kind of got the. I'm kind of fluctuating because it's the silly season, but man, I don't know. I, I was hitting the I two thirties. I really like those. I was kind of hitting the I two thirties against these. Uh, I had them, you know, had them both on the range and stuff. Um, these things were definitely longer. Uh, they flew just a little bit flatter than the two thirty, but definitely longer. Um, they sponged a touch less, and uh, but the feel on them is so so good. So um, how they how they packed in um, a good amount of forgiveness. Amazing feel, uh, power, distance, all that. Like how they packed it into a, a, a club head this small, I, I'm not sure. I don't know how they did it, but it is a, a really, really good iron. And if you're a player who, um, you know, you, you want like a, a, a compact player's iron that gives you some distance, that has like literally no offset um, and just has an overall really good look, but offers you the performance that, that you maybe need, um, this thing is is tough to beat. So it is uh, uh, the Mizar Tour could be it could be in my bag right now. <laughs> it's really really good. So we'll have to hit some more. I mean I know there's tons of, of equipment coming out this year, but right now uh, these things are, are are super impressive and uh, they they very easily uh, could be a gamer with without any any hesitation because they are uh, they're that good. So um, if you want to check out more, uh, you go to uh, Vega's website and go to vega-golf.com. Uh, they've got all their stuff on there. They'll be able to find, uh, you know, you can buy stuff right off the site, but I think you can also probably find uh, who distributors are and stuff like that. But um, these things here, VDC is really, really good. I think for the the, the better player uh, looking for, you know, a, just an exceptional feeling, uh, you know, player's cavity, definitely a great option. Uh, if you're a player like me who's kind of that, looking for that cheater iron that looks the part but offers you the forgiveness, offers you some power, um, this Mizar Tour is is going to be tough to beat. So, um, like I said, might be uh, might be in the bag coming out of this spring. We'll see how it goes, but uh, uh, they're 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 much, they're they're way better than I expected. Like I said, I expected them to be uh, uh, good, but not this good. So, uh, check out both uh, Mizar Tour VDC, uh, but Vega Golf uh, has got some great irons uh, right now. I've got the uh, the actual Alcor wedge with the adjustable sole. I want to do some more hitting with that. I, I want to take it over to the, the, the short game area when I can, uh, even though it might be a little firm. But I, I hit it off the mat, uh, and, uh, and and I liked it so far. But I want to hit uh, a little bit more, and I want to mess around with the soles some more. So we'll talk about that uh, in the future. But like I said, uh, Vega, Vega Golf. They um, Like I said, they, these, uh, they got some, some solid irons out. The Mizar Tour, I think, is uh, uh, one that uh, impressed me. I mean, they're both impressive, but that one really – Kind of took me by surprise. So uh, that's uh, what I've got for clubs today. Um, hopefully, I mean, I know it's Thursday. I'm going to try to do my Q&A today. I know I missed it last week. It's just like so busy between between work and between, uh, you know, trying to get your, your family and house together for the holidays. It's just, it's brutal. So uh, big thank you to Vega for sending that stuff. Like I said, check out their stuff at vega, vega-golf.com. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got. So everybody have a great holiday. Uh, again, be safe, everybody. And uh, thank you all for, for listening. I th- I'm going to do one more show. I'm going to have a show next week. Um, I know TG2, we kind of did our last show of the year. I'm going to do another show for next week um, here. So finish out the year and I will uh, do all the goodbyes and thank you, thank yous then. But I everybody have a, a good holiday. Uh, enjoy it with your family, friends, whoever you're celebrating with. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, next week for uh, 
before the end of the year. So have a good one. We'll talk next week.